In this video, we are counting down 10 insanely cool Linux terminal applications that will blow your mind. The Linux terminal gives you thousands of commands and tools, but I have scoured through and handpicked just 10 that are super useful, extremely powerful and some just plain fun to use. These 10 gems will let you boost your download speeds, let you visualize hidden info and do some really cool things in the terminal. Yeah, we are leveling up your Linux skills. So get ready to show off your new terminal skills and impress your friends. Remember kids, with great power comes great responsibility. Some of these tools can be quite powerful. Be careful with them. Alright, starting off with a banger, we have Btop on number 10. Now you might be familiar with the top command. It gives you a list of running applications with some additional info like the memory usage and stuff. But it doesn't make a lot of sense to an untrained eye and btop just does it better. Install btop by running sudo app install btop and once it's installed, type in btop and hit enter. We get a cool terminal window here that's loaded with info. Firstly, we have a graph here. This lets you catch any spikes or dips in CPU usage. Then you have in-depth CPU and GPU usage here. Core usage, core temperatures and in-depth GPU stats are shown here. I prefer this over the GNOME system monitor because of this one thing. It shows GPU usage here as well. GNOME system monitor doesn't. Then we have memory usage indicators here and it separates the RAM usage between used and cached. This is cool. Then we have disk and storage use info here. Under that, real time network usage stats are displayed. Finally, we get a list of running apps with their RAM and CPU use. Now BTOP is extremely customizable. You can interact with it using the mouse and keyboard. You can increase or decrease the refresh frequency. You can remove and add back these boxes by pressing the 1 to 5 number keys. And you can jump into the settings and make in-depth changes like the theme and stuff. You press Q to exit BTOP. I love this one. The command to install BTOP and all the other applications in this video are given in the description below. You can copy paste them in the terminal and hit enter to install them. Next on the list, we have the Ranger File Manager. The Linux terminal gives you the ls command to browse your file system. This command is one of the most extensible, customizable commands there is. But man, this can be a bit dull to use. Enter the Ranger File Manager. You install it by running sudo apt install ranger. Type in ranger and hit enter to open it. Files and folders are color coded, so you know what is what. You control the middle column. You have the parent directory on your left hand side and the current folder contents on your right hand side. You just use the arrow keys to control this. Up and down to move, obviously up and down and use right and left to move into and outside the folders. You can also open files by pressing the right arrow key on them. You can even use the mouse here. The range of file manager also lets you do operations on files like rename, delete, cut, copy, paste, etc. Ranger gives us many keyboard shortcuts to do this. But a much simpler way to do this is, select the file that you want and then press the colon key and just type in what you want to do. If you type in delete and hit enter, the file will be deleted. If you type in colon, rename and a new name and hit enter, that file will be renamed. If you type in colon copy, it will be copied and you can just move on to some other location and press colon and type in paste and hit enter and it will be pasted. You get the idea. I feel that using it like this is simpler than having to go through the hassle of learning the shortcuts. Using Ranger makes file management inside a terminal a simpler affair. And since you are getting a tree-like top view of your files here, this can at times feel better than your graphical file manager too. Alright, next up we have speed test. How do you generally check your internet speeds? You open up the browser, you search for speed test and you click on run speed test and wait for the results. Yeah. Life's too short for that. Instead, we just type in speed test in a terminal and hit enter. You have your download speeds here and your upload speed and other information like latency is provided here. You can also see your ISP and the server used to connect and test the internet speed. Cool and fast. To install speed test, open the link given in the description below and download the package for your architecture. It will be AMD64 for most people. Once it's downloaded, open the download location, right click and open the terminal and run sudo dpkg space hyphen i speed and press the tab key to auto complete the name and hit enter. Once it's installed, you can just type in speed test and hit enter and it will test your speed. 
On number seven, we have the Axel Download Accelerator. I use this one a lot and I absolutely love it. Axel is a lightweight and simple download accelerator. Axel is not exactly a download manager. Nobody uses download managers today, but if you want those, there are better ones than Axel. Axel, simply put, is a tool that downloads files faster. Whenever you are downloading a file using your browser, your computer establishes a connection to the server and the file transfer takes place through that connection. What Axel does differently is, it opens multiple connections to a server instead of just one and splits the download into several parts which are then downloaded simultaneously. This increases the download speed by utilizing more bandwidth. And the speed difference can be noticeably huge on larger files. To install Axel, you just run sudo apt install Axel. To download a file with Axel, you need to get the URL of the file to be downloaded. Copy it and open up a terminal and type in axel space hyphen yen and type in 8. You can type in other numbers here as well. This number specifies how many connections you want to use to connect to the server. So here, this file will be downloaded in 8 parts and combined once the download completes. 8 is a very balanced number for this. You can also use the hyphen a flag so that Axel doesn't spam the terminal. Then paste the download URL. Hit enter. You can see the file being downloaded using multiple connections here. On top of being faster to download files, Axel is also more reliable since even if the download fails on any of the connections, there are multiple connections running so that the file downloads. You can also resume downloads if they are interrupted for some reason. I always use Axel to download Linux distros and I just prefer it this way. It's simple, fast and I can open up a terminal in any location and download files to that particular directory itself. Next up, we have NeoFetch on number 6. NeoFetch is a terminal utility that gives you information about your system but does it in a really cool way. This is especially popular on Reddit when people are sharing screenshots of their system. It draws an ASCII logo of your Linux distro and gives a general overview of your OS, kernel, uptime, the number of packages installed, shell, system resolution, desktop environment, theme, CPU, memory, and GPU. It takes something as boring as sharing your system details and makes it cool and interesting. You can install NeoFetch by running sudo apt install NeoFetch and run it with the NeoFetch command. One of the most frequent issues I've seen my students have with learning to use the Linux terminal is initial difficulty with understanding the output of the ls command. The ls command gives you a list of the contents of the current directory. You just type in ls and hit enter. While folders and files are color coded, it can nonetheless be difficult for a newcomer to discern between files and folders and different kinds of files. The lsd command solves this by adding nifty little icons. It might be a very little thing, but it really helps our brains make sense of what's going on in this folder. On larger folders like Etsy, this can be very helpful to someone who is new to the terminal. Just adding this D here gives you a slight advantage. To install lsd, run sudo apt install lsd. The D here stands for deluxe. By the way, if you haven't already, check out my course Linux Mastery Express. I've designed this course to level up your Linux skills very quickly. With this course, you'll get so comfortable using the terminal commands that your friends will think you're a Linux wizard. You'll get perfect with the most used, most useful commands and also learn advanced things like using the vEditor and shell scripting as well. Linux Mastery Express, link in the description, do check it out. I'm in, firewalls down, encryptions breaking. They really thought that 256-bit cipher would stop me. Yeah, this is the standard hacking scene you see in Hollywood movies, right? I'm not hacking anything here. Not saying I can't, but right now I'm not. Okay, I can't. But that's not gonna stop me from looking cool. Hollywood is a simple yet aptly named terminal utility that makes it look as if some real hacky important stuff is going on on your computer. It actually doesn't hack anything, but spams your terminal with this kind of text. You just type in Hollywood and hit enter. You can even press F11 key to make the terminal full screen. Around your friends, keep this running on the screen. And if they ask what you're doing, minimize the terminal and just say nothing. FFmpeg is one of the most powerful toolkits in the world to work with media. Many video and audio players, video editors, media converters use FFmpeg under the hood. This is one of the most requested dependencies by applications that I've seen. 
FFmpeg is probably the best example of the flexibility or raw power that command line apps have over graphical apps. Let's quickly go over some of the most popular use cases of FFmpeg. Firstly, video format conversion. You can easily convert any video format to any other video format by running this simple command. FFmpeg-i input.mp4 output.mkv or any other video format. The i denotes the input video, that is which video needs to be converted and finally the output video name and format. FFmpeg will use the best encoders needed for the job automatically. You can also convert videos to GIF using this command. Yeah, it's GIF. You can quickly trim a video by providing a start and end time. The hyphen SS is used to set the start time and hyphen 2 is used to set the end time. This is probably the quickest way to trim a video. You can resize a video, compress a video, add subtitles to a video and do a lot more. Any operation that you can think of on any kind of media file can be done with FFmpeg. FFmpeg is the top of the food chain. There's nothing more flexible or powerful than it. I regularly work with media files and I have many shell scripts using FFmpeg which I find really useful. NCDU or the NCURSUS disk usage is a simple and fast command line tool used to analyze, visualize and manage disk usage. NCDU has a fairly simple interface that lets you see what things are taking up disk space and also manage them from here itself. Install it by running sudo apt install ncdu and launch it by typing in ncdu and hitting enter. You can see a list of all the files and folders in the current directory and this also shows how much space something is using here. By default, this list is sorted by size. You can use the arrow keys to move up and down and right and left arrow keys move inside and outside directories. You can press D to delete a file or a folder. Be careful with that option as you might end up deleting something important. Press the question mark key to see a list of all the options that you get here. You can see that NCDU gives exhaustive options for storage management here. You can sort using various filters. You can visualize data here and free disk storage with a single keystroke. Even with so many features and options, NCDU is a very lightweight and fast utility. That's one of the biggest advantages of these command line applications. Alright, this next one will make a huge difference if you are interested in using command line tools and applications. For each and every command that you can run in the terminal, a help section is provided which gives you detailed information about the command, how to use it and all the options associated with it. You just type in the command, leave a space and type in hyphen hyphen help and hit enter. You can see that the general information about what the command does is given, then a list of all the options or flags as they are called is given with information about what each one of these does. This is an absolutely phenomenal feature. You get in-depth info about every command right here itself. But at times, it can get too in-depth. I mean, this is great if you want to write your PhD thesis on a command, but to quickly start using a command, it can be a bit too much. Enter the TLDR command. It's exactly what it sounds like. Too long, didn't read. Instead of running the help option on a command, you can just do TLDR and a command, any command, and you'll get quick info on that command and how to start using it with examples of the most popular options. I vastly prefer this command over the help option as most times I just want to know how to get started with a command. I don't want mastery in it. You can install TLDR by running sudo apt install TLDR. Alright guys, there you have it. 10 cool Linux terminal applications that are useful, powerful or just fun to use. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, consider subscribing to the channel and leave me a big thumbs up. And if you're interested in leveling up your Linux skills, the link to my course Linux Mastery Express is given in the description below. It's designed to teach you Linux and take you from zero to hero within the shortest amount of time possible. You'll be using Linux like a pro within a matter of hours, so definitely check that out. Next up, check out this cool distro called Archcraft that's making a lot of noise in the Linux community. It's a really fantastic distro based on Arch Linux, so definitely don't miss that. Alright, this is Linux Techs, signing out. <laughs>